Hello everyone, today we're going to be mapping our keys. You might think this isn't that important, but it's actually one of the most important things you're going to do when playing Star Citizen. Star Citizen has 2,346,896,123 buttons that need to be mapped, so it's important to remember and know each one. Now you could use the standard keybinds, reflect on the diagram and the keybinds menu for different commands, but you will feel much more confident about what you can do if you know everything that you have mapped. So this is why we are going to map our keys before diving in. If you guys enjoy my videos, don't forget to subscribe to see them as soon as they become available. If you like the video, hit that button and feel free to leave a comment. At this point, we've made an account, purchased the ship package that has Star Citizen or Squadron 42 in Star Citizen, and now we're ready to start playing. If you haven't purchased the packet yet, go to the video that's on screen right here, follow those instructions, once you're finished, come back and continue. I do everything with you so it's easy and straightforward. First, we are going to make our character. Once we have a character we like, let's confirm and select our starting point in the universe. Port Allister is medium security space, meaning the station will shoot at you if you have a criminal status, but you can still land and go inside of the station without being shot, since there's no guards. The station is also within an armistice zone, Armistice zones are areas in which you cannot shoot or draw weapons. This area extends outside of the landing zone, so you won't get shot while landing by other players. This is a good starting spot if you want to do legal activities. Note that flying into people on the landing pads, also known as pad ramming, is considered griefing and is punishable. Make sure you report with a screenshot if possible immediately. Grim Hex is a low security area. You can land here with a full crime stat. This is a good place to start if you're going to be doing more illegal things than legal. Levski is another low security area. It's not too far from Grimm or Alistair. Although there are no guards to kill you, you can't land here with a high crime stat, but maybe your friends can smuggle you in. This planet has low gravity and a short atmospheric distance, making it a good place to quickly partake in legal and illegal activities. Lauraville is a high security zone, meaning if you step off a ship in the hangars, you're going to get shot on sight by the guards. This starting area is good for players that want to do a multitude of mission types. Mining in caves, package deliveries, FPS bunker missions, etc. They are all here. I recommend if you start here, leave and dock in the space station above the planet as it is faster to get into action from there. Area 18 is high security, meaning you can't land with a high crime stat. If you get smuggled in, the guards will kill you. Area 18 is a good place to start if you want to explore. You might not end up staying here, but it's a good place to start because it looks really nice. We're going to start in Lorville. I want access to bunker missions, which are on foot, package deliveries, and space combat missions. Hurston is a big planet with a big station. We have to take a train to get to the spaceport every single time we spawn here. So instead of starting on the planet, we are going to go dock in the space station. Hold F, look around, and left click on the option to get up. Opening doors is the same. Hold F, look at the door, left click to open. Anything you can interact with uses the same mechanics. Interact and select the ground floor. Pressing F4 takes you to third person and you can hold Z to rotate the camera. Speed up or slow down by scrolling the mouse wheel. Follow the signs to the spaceport. Welcome to Metro Center. Transfers to the perimeter, spaceport, and industry line. Welcome. 
Welcome to Metro Center. Transfers to the perimeter of the spaceport and industry lines. Security reserves the right to search travelers. Lorville is huge. This train actually takes us around Lorville to the spaceport. This isn't some loading screen. This is an actual train that travels on a path that leads us to the spaceport. Once the server meshing is complete, I imagine that these trains will be full of players. Be considerate to your fellow travelers. Do not block doors. Next stop, Tisa Spaceport. We can actually see where we're headed from this window. While holding F4, press plus or minus to zoom in or out. Now arriving, Tisa Spaceport. Please watch your step when disembarking the train. We spawn our ship using these terminals here. If chat is in your way, press F12. Depending on your package and your subscription status, you'll see different ships here. On the ship that you want to spawn, click retrieve. Remember the hangar or the pad that it spawns on. There will be signs that tell you where the hangers are. We're going to follow the signs and head right to the hangers. This is the terminal for rental ships.
To start the ship, we're going to hold F and look for flight ready. Now we're going to give the ship some time to start up. The next thing we need to do is ask for permission to leave. Press F2, click comm link in the bottom left, click contacts in the top left, then click the open comms button on Lorville landing services. We can also do this on the ship's MDF. Press F2 to leave the Moby Glass. On any MDF, hit the menu in the top left corner, go to comms. Here you'll see that same Lorville landing services with an open comms button. Using the mouse scroll wheel, we can control our maximum speed the same way we do when we're walking. So we're going to scroll it all the way back so that we can take off slow. Let the hangar doors open up all the way since you're new. Make sure your reticle is centered and press space to lift off. Use your mouse scroll wheel up to go faster and down to go slower. Press N to raise your landing gear. If you look around the sky, you might be able to see the space station. I can see it right here. So we're going to change our ship's orientation and try to head directly to the space station. If your camera gets lost, hold F4 and press the asterisk on the number pad to reset the camera. During this time of day, the space station is really visible, so we're going to fly directly towards it. At maximum speed, it's a few minutes away, but we're going to use our quantum drive to speed things up. Scroll your mouse wheel until the white line next to your speed is all the way at the top. Set your cruise control by pressing C. In Star Citizen, there are no loading screens. Everything you see is being procedurally generated. Whenever you're ready to warp to the space station, press B. We're going to look directly at the space station and let the drive spool. If your warp drive is calibrated but it's not spooling, press B one more time. Once the spool and calibration is complete, press B again to initiate the quantum travel. Slow down and get control of your speed prior to reaching the space station. There's a bug where sometimes your MDFs might get stuck. If this happens, go to your menu, cycle through to another menu and then go back to comms and this should fix the issue. Okay. 
My MDF isn't stuck. I'm just not close enough. Once I'm close enough, I can hit the recycle button and it should pop up with the new location. If you're coming in too fast, the space brake is X. Hold it and it'll slow you down. Now that I'm close enough, I'll click reset on the comms and then I can land at the harbor. After you request landing, wait a few seconds and you'll see a wrench pop up on your heads up display. You might have to look around to find it, but it's there. Maintain control of your speed as you approach the pad. Press N to lower your landing gear. If you're uncomfortable landing, hover over the pad and hold N to initiate an auto landing. Now that we've touched down here, this is our new home base. Hold F and power down the ship. Press Y to exit your seat. From here, we can actually look at the planet's surface and see Lorville, the place we came from. Star Citizen has a very high level of fidelity. We're actually gonna map our keys right here. This is a good place to test EVA, on foot, spaceship, everything. If they store our ship because of the timer, we'll go inside to the lobby and retrieve the ship again. Now that we've docked here, this is where we'll spawn. So let's start the process of mapping all of the 750 billion keybinds. So I'm gonna go over all of the keybinds. I'll talk about what they do, if they need a little explanation, and then you guys can bind them to whatever you're comfortable with. You can map pitch, yaw, and roll individually. If you're using analogs, map on the axis. Psycho mouse move mode switches your mouse from a control that drifts with the cursor to a control that follows the actual position of the mouse, like an FPS. If you're using a flight stick and you want to map roll on a twist or an axis of the analog, use roll or map the roll, not the left or right. Swap Y'all Roll is more advanced. It's for switching your flight mode in different situations. Base Brick slows you down really fast, so you're gonna need this command. The speed limiter is that line on the right side of your speed that shows how fast you can go. The acceleration limiter limits your throttle, which is good for taking off and landing in ships that have wheels. Decoupled mode allows you to turn your ship in any direction while maintaining your initial forward direction. Strafe up and down can be mapped individually or on an analog axis. The speed limiter can be toggled on and off. The G-Force safety prevents you from blacking out from the G-Force or redding out from the G-Force. You can turn this off so that you can turn with the risk of blacking out or redding out. ESP is like auto-aim. It automatically gravitates your cursor towards targets. Cruise control maintains your speed. Afterburners boost your speed. Landing systems lowers or raises your landing gear. Toggle VTOL switches select ships to hover mode. Auto land lands your ship automatically if you're over a landing pad. Make sure you map the quantum travel system and the quantum drive to the same button so you can spool the engine and initiate the system with the same button. If you want to aim with a mouse or an analog, make sure you map left and right and up and down. 
Look ahead shifts the camera in the direction you're going. Cycle mouse aim mode cycles between moving your ship while you're aiming and not moving your ship while you're aiming. Select target under reticle allows you to select whatever target you're looking at. The rest of the targeting commands are self-explanatory, but if you have any questions, just leave a comment. Target hailing allows you to call your current target. All of the mining commands are self-explanatory. The turret commands can be mapped independently, but they're all self-explanatory as well. Weapons are also self-explanatory. The gimbal mode switch between auto aim, cursor aim, and fixed aiming. Defensive is also self-explanatory. Make sure you map the countermeasure and the countermeasure ammo. The power settings are advanced, but with the presets you can save different configurations for your power. You'll start using these settings once you have a little more experience. The radar commands do nothing right now. Under flight HUD, the Moby Glass is for when you're sitting in your ship, the scoreboard is for Arena Commander, and the map isn't used right now. Headlights are self-explanatory. These on-foot commands are also self-explanatory. The hidden keyword is star. The contract item is how you pull out key cards that are used in different missions. The EVA commands are all self-explanatory. Just make sure you map your view up, down, left, right on axes if you're using an analog or a mouse and keyboard. The ground vehicle controls are also self-explanatory. This is how you control a rover or a gray cat buggy or a tank or a ballista. This is how you control all of those things. Ground vehicle movement controls how you move forward, back, left, right, how you shoot and break in a ground vehicle. The gunner commands control how you fire. Electronic access is for arena commander and the electronic access commands control all of your camera angles. Under social, map your respawn for arena commander. Comlink app opens up the comlink part of the mobile glass. The chat window command turns chat window on and off. Chat focus is the button that you'll use to start chatting. Under social, you can accept, decline, and ignore social or party invites. Emotes are self-explanatory. I would suggest you map one emote because it can help you get out of certain glitches. These commands allow you to recalibrate VoIP, VoIP, and head tracking. If you're using these, these are good commands to map. The interaction commands control how we interact with objects. The camera controls allow you to customize how you create and save different camera angles. This last command for the server renderer is only for developers. Now that we've mapped all of our commands, we're going to go ahead and save it, name it, and this creates an XML file that's saved inside of our user folder. If we go to our installation directory, go to the Star Citizen folder, once again into the Star Citizen folder, to the live directory, then the user folder, under controls, mappings, and then we'll see our custom file. We want to save this file, send it to our email, put it in Dropbox. You want to save this configuration file because this is your controls. Now is the time to really test all of your controls. Check everything from on foot, EVA, vehicles, get inside of your shuttle, fly around a little bit. Really test your controls. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. And if you want to see my videos as soon as they become available, subscribe and turn on your notifications. And as always, eyes up, fly safe.